Every few months, almost like clockwork, we are hit by another surge of COVID-19. We're in the worst possible situation to experience this wave. It's winter and we've had flu making a raging comeback. We've also had a large number of paediatric viruses making a raging comeback. I think we have known on the ground for a little while that reinfection is certainly possible and it is happening. Depending on where you live, you could be experiencing your sixth epidemic wave. Just to declare, I've got a bit of skin in the game in this story. I'm fully vaxxed, but in the last three months, I've caught COVID twice. I'm just one of tens of thousands who are being reinfected, and the impact is enormous. Maxim Street Family Practice, this is Sandra, how can I help? Are you all ready? We now really getting slammed again with increasing infections and in fact reinfections. Yes. So far and this is going to be your Fourth. other booster? It's rather frustrating to, uh, to those individuals and to us because we certainly can't see the end of, um, of the season uh, as we all hoped it would be with vaccination. At this busy general practice in northwest Sydney, GP Dr Maria da Costa is rushing to vaccinate the community against surging COVID. I think it's just been difficult for people to accept that, you know, they thought they'd been through it, they were vaccinated, they got the initial COVID infection, and now, unfortunately, they're contracting it again. Reinfection with COVID is on the rise around the world. While Australian data are limited, Reinfection rates in England have skyrocketed from 1% of COVID infections pre-Omicron to 23% of daily cases in recent weeks. In New York State, reinfection now makes up 17% of current COVID cases. We're getting reinfection essentially because the virus continues to evolve. Virologist Associate Professor Kirsty Short says that this evolution it's all about COVID-19 becoming more contagious. Every single mutation that acquires in the virus is essentially to help the virus transmit, be it attaching to your nose more efficiently, or be it evading the antibody response that you've generated from past infection or vaccination. What that means is immunity from prior infection or vaccination isn't as good at protecting you from catching newer variants. The antibodies that we've produced from the vaccine or from prior infections uh, appear to be less effective against this BA5 variant, probably in the order of two to four fold compared to, let's say, BA1 variant. Infectious diseases physician Professor Anton Pellick is currently seeing growing numbers of COVID patients at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. Australia-wide in January, we peaked at 5,400 hospitalizations, and today we're at approximately 5,350. So we are almost at the same level, at least across the country, uh, with hospitalizations. There are questions about the effects of reinfection. Are they worse or milder than the first time you had COVID? The thing is, the virulence or dangerousness of this virus is entirely separate from its transmissibility. What we're not seeing is necessarily that the virus is becoming less virulent over time, and we should never expect that. It's a common misconception that new variants inevitably become milder. Instinctively, you would think that if you get reinfected, your symptoms should be better than what they were the first time. We know anecdotally that's not always the case and there has been literature uh, coming out suggesting that that's not the case. And then of course it depends which variant you're infected with because we are seeing that these variants do have subtle but significant differences in terms of the disease they cause. One US study of Defence Force veterans that's yet to be peer reviewed found COVID reinfections aren't necessarily benign. What it showed is that if you had uh, two infections compared to one or three or more infections compared to the other, 
your health outcomes were worse each time and it was incrementally worse each time. I think these uh, you know, kind of data uh, are important justifications for why everyone in the community would want to try and prevent infection and reinfection. While boosting is underway with existing vaccines, Done. targeted versions based on the first Omicron strain are in the wings. Moderna has finalised its application to our medicines regulator, the Therapeutic Goods Administration. I'm eligible for a fourth booster and I sort of have to think, do I want to get a fourth booster? And my rationale was that there's so much COVID in the community right now, my best bet of protection is getting a fourth booster. Now, yes, down the line, there may come um, not just BA.1 Omicron specific vaccines, but also the more updated BA.4, BA.5. But I think if you sit around waiting for those, you're really putting yourself at risk of infection. Many experts feel that until a catch-all vaccine is developed for all potential variants, we've got to slow the spread down. I think people had a false sense of security in that for three months they were free and therefore they did not have to wear masks or uh, practice uh, hand hygiene or distancing. And now it is becoming quite obvious that it is happening and therefore that all those issues that you thought you didn't need to do anymore are still very much um, necessary and important. I think that vaccination still needs to be core and central to our intervention against COVID. But I also think we need to think about sustainable public health measures that also risk mitigate and prevent the acquisition of infection.